Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to go over some concepts and examples from um, ideal gas law and kinetic theory. Uh, to start out, we'll talk about the atomic mass unit here, which we know can be defined as um, 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Um, so that's the conversion between that. Then we have Avogadro's number, which is very, very important, and it defines the number of atoms per mole. And we um, write that as capital N with a capital sub A, or a sub capital A. There we go. And that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. Um, and that's, it doesn't matter what substance we're talking about, but each mole has that many atoms per mole. And we'll, we'll see that in the example, the example that we'll give here. Um, note also that mass per mole, or grams per mole, is equivalent to the atomic mass. Um, that's very important in terms of terminology. So when you come across um, some, uh, a question, um, make sure that you're identifying which is which, but with mass per mole and atomic mass, they're equivalent, so we can um, put those together. Um, we also have this, this, um, do I have my pin here? There it is. Uh, pen. Aha. We also have this little n. Um, that little n is defined as the number of, um, atoms versus, um, divided by Avogadro's number, so it's, so it's, uh, it's kind of a zeroed out, um, what's the term I'm looking for? A normalized, there we go, a normalized value. Um, we can also define this little n as the mass of whatever we have, divided by the mass per mole of what the substance is. So if we can calculate what the mass per mole of the substance is that we have, like if it's a mix, um, like, water, for example, is two hydrogens and an oxygen, um, and we have a certain amount of mass of water, then we can find this density, um, this little n, uh, for the number of particles um, in the, um, in whatever substance we have. So, um, important definition um, that we have there. Um, so if we look at a sample question, um, this is kind of one from um, that you've probably seen before, but it's uh, slightly different. Um, so if we consider one mole of hydrogen, or H2, and one mole of oxygen, O2, which has a greater number of molecules and which has the greatest mass? So let's go through and do this. First, we need to calculate the molecular mass of, of each gas i guess here we we have gas we're using we have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas um so we can do that hydrogen or h2 is made up of two hydrogen atoms so we have two hydrogen atoms which this is the atomic mass unit for hydrogen which we can find on the periodic table so therefore the um molecular molecular mass of hydrogen is 2.01588 AMUs, or converting that, we also have this, which is the mass per mole, grams per mole. Um, so that is how we can do that conversion there. We go to the oxygen. Oxygen is O2, which consists of two oxygen atoms. So we have the 15.9994 um, atomic mass units for oxygen. That gives us about 32 um, for the atomic mass or mass per mole um, for oxygen. Next thing that we then can do is if we have the mass per mole, note that um, we now need to, oh, right. So typically, if we're not just looking for one mole, then 
what we need to do is find the mass in one mole. So we will multiply these two, this one for hydrogen and this one for oxygen by the number of moles. So if we're looking for like 50 moles, then we multiply that um, by 50. Um, but here it's, it's nice and easy. Um, so we don't have to really worry about that. So we have, um, in our one mole, we have each, um, for hydrogen and oxygen, we have the, the mass, the masses for each of those moles. Um, and then we can go through and find the number of molecules. Um, now this is also kind of a, tr a trick question because we have one mole of each of these substances, and we we know that the that Avogadro's number is defined as the number of atoms in one mole. Um, so therefore, we can go through and we can actually use this equation to write it all out. Um, oops, but. Um, but they each have the same amount of molecules because they are one mole of a substance. But what's different is this mass. So obviously, mass of hydrogen is much different than the mass of oxygen. I guess I could do this symbol here. Um, so we know that the one mole of oxygen has more mass than the mole of hydrogen. Um, so a little question for you then. If one, um, if someone, if we, that's what that one meant, had 25 grams of the same oxygen gas, how many molecules would it contain? So you can go through and figure that out. Um, hopefully fairly simple now, simply now. Um, so hopefully that helps with how to go about this. Again, if you want to find the number of molecules and mass, go through calculate the molecular mass, calculate the mass in one mole, and then you can find the number of molecules or the amount of mass that you need, depending on how many moles and things you have. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, going on to the next topic here with the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law, um, there's not very many situations that we have ideal gases. Um, so a lot of our, or a lot of the problems then assume that we have an ideal gas or that we have a real gas that we can um, assume is in the right conditions to for this to be used and it's a fairly good assumption so it's not that big of a deal but it's uh for the ideal gas lots pv equals nrt or nkt um depending on what values you want to use um we have uh, this constant R, which is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin, or um, K, which is 1.38 times 10 to 23 joules per Kelvin. So depending on which one you want to use, and depending on the problem, sometimes the problem gives you, and it's dependent on this, sometimes the problem gives you this little N, which again is a number density, um, or this big N, which is just the number of, number of molecules or atoms. Um, so depending on which N, the problem gives you, you can choose which form of the ideal gas law you can use or want to use. Um, so, so I guess I, I should say that this little n is in moles because um, so because this R has a moles in the denominator, so that that's where that comes from. So, if you if you're given moles, then use the little n. If you if you're just given the number or looking for the number, then you can use this capital N equation for the NKT portion of the um, ideal gas law. Um, so again, so ensure that the units are consistent, read through the problem, see which one you need to use, um, and ensure that the temperature is in Kelvin. So notice that that each of these constants, the K and the R, where's my little, there it is, um, they have a unit in, K, in Kelvin, which means that our temperature must be in Kelvin. Um, I was going through and doing some some problems for this, and I was like, why aren't these working? It was because my T was not in Kelvin. So make sure that your T is in Kelvin. Um, and we'll go through and see um, with some of these problems um, that we do need them. So get right to it. So here's a sample question. We have an ideal mono, 
monotonic gas that is initially at 10 degrees Celsius. <laughs> 10 degrees Celsius. If the pressure of the gas is 10 times what it was and the volume is half its initial, what is its final temperature? So this is a very typical question that we see with the ideal gas law, um, where we compare initial quantity initial things with final things. So here's how we set this all up. So first thing that we need to do is make sure that our units are consistent. We're going to convert the initial temperature into Kelvin. So we can do that with simply um, adding 273 degrees. And so we get 283 Kelvin for our temperature. Second, we want to look at the ideal gas law equation. It's the initial state and then the final state. So here's we can just um, give these um, all of these variables um, an initial value, so p naught or v naught, n naught and t naught, and then we can go through the problem and see which which is what they've given us, what what we're trying to find, what stays the same. So we'll go through that here in a second. So then we can also set up the final, which is the same thing. We just give everything a p uh, a final um, sub note here to separate and distinguish between the initial state and the final state. Um, in this question, it can say that the number of moles change. So we can assume that the n's are constant, so we don't have to worry about them. The r is also constant because the r is a constant. So that's something else that we don't have to worry about. But then we can reorganize the equation and set the initial and final equations together. Because n and r are the same, then all we have to do is divide so all we've done here is bring this t over or rather divided by and divided this t onto this side and because these n's and r's are con are the same then that means that these are equal so we can set our two um, ratios together p v over t initial and p v over t final then we're also given this that if the final pressure is 10 times the initial pressure, then we have this um, portion of the equation. And if the final volume is half the initial volume, then what happens? So this we can then replace into our PF. And the final we can replace into here. We can then rearrange all the equations, and we end up with things the p naughts and the v naughts canceling, and we end up with the t final is equal to five times the initial temperature. The initial temperature is 283. So that is what gives us the 1415 Kelvin for the final answer. Um, so you can go through, see how that works for you, and I hope it does work for you, um, and test out um, this, this way to go through the problems. Um, and like I said, this is a very common usage of the ideal gas law, looking at the before and comparing it to the after, depending on what's happening. If you have an isothermic um, uh, system, which means that the temperature stays the same, then you're looking at a change in pressure and a change in volume. Um, in the isobaric, then you have the same pressure. Um, and, and then you can look for a change in volume. You can look for a change in moles. You can look for a change in temperature. So... Um, depending on the problem, uh, some things are going to be held constant and you're going to be finding other items. But this is how you can set it up and compare between the initial state and the final state. So thank you, and I hope this helps. Oh, I forgot. Was it one last one? I think I'll put this in another recording. So we'll get to that. So ideal gas law, kinetic theory here. So thanks.